Let's switch gears and talk about Lean Concepts. I'd like to talk about a book that is absolutely changing the way we think about IT and operations. The Phoenix Project is one of the most transformational books in information technology I've seen in 20 years working in the field. The book is written as a fictional story, but yet teaches extremely important concepts about how agile and lean methodologies can transform an organization from barely making it to winning in a global marketplace. This book discusses in detail one of the main principles of a learning organization and describes how to break up silos in ops, IT, and dev and become a learning organization. This is done by following the three ways. The principles are systems thinking, emphasizing the performance of the entire system. The focus is on the business value streams that are enabled by IT. In other words, it begins when requirements are identified by the business or IT, are built into development, and then tr transitioned into IT operations, where the value then is delivered to the customer in the form of a service. The next one is creating feedback loops. The goal of almost any process improvement initiative is to shorten and amplify feedback loops so necessary corrections can be continually made. The last one is Kaizen, creating a culture that fosters two things, continual experimentation, taking risks and learning from failure, and understanding that repetition and practice is the prerequisite to mastery, a culture that is focused on continuous improvement. It's time to talk about the seven critical dimensions of a learning organization that are illustrated in the Phoenix Project. These are continuous learning, an organization's effort to create a continuous learning opportunity for all of its members, inquiry and dialogue, an organization's effort in creating a culture of questioning, feedback, and experimentation, team learning, spirit of collaboration and collaborative skills, empowerment, encouraging feedback and action to address the gap between the current status and the vision regardless of rank, embedded systems, establishing systems to capture and share learning, systems connection, actions to connect the organizations to its internal and external environments, and strategic leadership, the extent to which a leader acts strategically using learning to create change. Time to get serious. Adopting lean practices by following the rituals and process is not enough to affect the cultural change that is needed to be successful. People expect that just by doing the rituals, they will see the results. The biggest issue is that over time, the adoption of these practices loses its fervor and people stop investing in making the process better and they give less detail into the specifics and the whole system starts to fall apart. For organizations to truly be successful, not only do they need to adopt lean and agile practices, but they also have to become a learning organization. This is the primary reason I put this course together to help tie DevOps, learning organization concepts, and lean development into a complete solution to achieve the kind of success that you want. Next, I'm going to show you some gradual ways to introduce core ideas of lean and agile development. They are the 15 minute morning meeting. This is a strictly informational meeting to let people on the team know what each member is working on that day. Each team member gets a couple of minutes to talk and provide their status update. Any questions should be discussed after the meeting between individuals directly affected as not to occupy everybody else's time. Next, feature planning. Plan features in one month increments, one to two features a month per team. Do an incremental release at the end of each month. Adopt the seven tenets of a learning organization. The next part is to have a demo of the new features and a meeting to discuss how to improve the process once a month. And finally, get some agile training after following the three steps above within six months. Next, let's highlight the main two bottlenecks in achieving the learning organization culture. 
Over the last 20 years, I've coached numerous teams in adoption of these practices. And the main bottleneck in most company culture is a lack of clear definition and empowerment. This results in unmotivated team members that only do the bare minimum to keep their job. These are some of the best practices to avoid such situations. A few proven methods to address these bottlenecks are training and empowerment, give team members the tools to succeed, investing resources into making them experts, let team members decide which tasks to work on and which tasks they would be best at, form the teams around features and products, not responsibilities. The book The Goal identifies ways to find bottlenecks in the development and adoption process. The whole book is about understanding the theory of constraints. These are the steps on how to identify a bottleneck. They are 1. Identify the system constraint. 2. Decide how to exploit that constraint. 3. Subordinate everything else to the above decision. 4. Evaluate the system constraints. 5. Warning, if in the previous steps the constraint has been broken, go back to step 1. Now it's time to talk about another critical component of DevOps flow, creating feedback loops. I keep repeating this message since it's the foundation to the whole process. When building systems, it's essential to think about the outputs, the inputs, and defining metrics to measure success and failure. The point of the feedback loop is to gradually improve processes over time by monitoring the outputs and optimizing the input for the systems you create. Figure out what matters to your organization and how to measure it. Make sure the, to measure it on a regular basis. Here are some feedback loops that make sense to DevOps. By all means, these aren't all of them, but here's a good start. They are automated unit tests, automated system tests, CI tests during the build, exploring your code, manual scripted regression tests, statistical analysis of production metrics, and figuring out the customer opinion about your product. Kaizen. Kaizen means improvement in Japanese. It is used in lean philosophy as a way to reflect on a process on a reoccurring basis to figure out what works and what doesn't work to promote constant improvement. Two of the most important takeaways from this course are the concept of creating feedback loops and the concept of constant improvement. Without both of these, it's impossible to, to achieve a true learning organization and a successful DevOps team. Kaizen is one of these two takeaways. The improvement kata using PDCA takes its root from the scientific method. A fundamental principle of the scientific method and PDCA is iteration. Once a hypothesis is confirmed or negated, executing the cycle again will extend the knowledge further. Repeating the PDCA cycle can bring us closer to the goal, usually a perfect operation and output. So when implementing the improvement kata and PDCA, you need to do the following first. Process before going to PDCA looks like this. Understanding the direction. What is the challenge you are trying to meet? Grasp the current condition. What is the process's current pattern? Establish the next target condition. What pattern do you want to have next? And then PDCA towards the target condition. So the next question is, what is PDCA. PDA stands for Plan, Do, Check, Act. Let's go into this deeper. So here is the official steps from the Wikipedia. Plan. Establish the objectives and processes necessary to deliver results in accordance with the expected output, the target or goals. By establishing output expectations, the completeness and accuracy of the spec is also part of the targeted improvement. When possible, start on a small scale to test possible effects. Do. Implement the plan. Execute the process. Make the product. Collect the data for charting and analysis in the check and act steps. Next step. Check. Study the actual results measured and collected in the do above. 
and compare against the expected results, targets or goals from the plan. To ascertain any differences, look at the deviation in implementation from the plan and also look for appropriateness and completeness of the plan to enable the execution do part. Charting data can make this much easier to see trends over several PDCA cycles and in order to convert the collected data into information, information is what you need for the next step act. If the check shows that the plan that was implemented in the do is an improvement to the prior standard baseline, then that becomes the new standard baseline for how the organization should act going forward. New standards are enacted. If the check shows that the plan that was implemented in the do is not an improvement, then the existing standard baseline will remain in place. In either case, if the check showed something different than expected, whether better or worse, then there is more learning to be done and that will suggest potential PDCA cycles. And the last slide in this section is infrastructure as code. Andrew Schaefer coined this term back in 2009. It's meant a number of things to different people, but this is how I interpret it and what I strive to automate and get into code repositories. So the following, I think, need to be treated as code. Network configurations, cloud-based virtualization infrastructures like CloudFormation and OpsWork and AWS, automated provisioning of resources, CloudFormation again, automated monitoring, lots of cool tools there, automated unit tests, Automated integration tests, automated performance tests, automated packaging, using continuous delivery with automated deployment. You do this right, this is half the battle.